Did you know that the most glamorous portraits of women in the court of Versailles and some influential men in Europe were actually created by a woman? Even the famous portraits of Queen Marie Antoinette were mostly the work of a woman. Her name was Elisabeth Louise Vigée Lebrun, a painter who remained overlooked for 200 years. Elisabeth Louise Vigée was born in Paris on April 16, 1755. She was the daughter of Jean, a hairdresser with a peasant background, and Louis Vigée, a portrait painter, pastel maker, and member of the Académie de saint Luc. From a young age, Elisabeth showed her artistic talent, and she received her first instruction from her father. At the age of five, in 1760, she entered a convent and stayed there until 1766. Her father passed away when she was 12 years old. In 1768, her mother married a wealthy but stingy jeweler, Jacques-Francois Le Sèvre, and their family moved to Rue Saint-Honoré, near the Palais Royal. During her teenage years, Vigée expressed her intention to join the Académie Royale, an art institution established in France in the 17th century during the reign of Louis XIV. The institution was dedicated to promoting and regulating the arts of painting and sculpture under royal patronage. However, she was rejected because she was a woman. During that time, women faced difficulties being accepted as members of the prestigious art academy. The Académie Royale faced strong gender barriers, and its membership was dominated by men. Vigée Lebrun was rejected solely because she was a woman, despite her exceptional artistic talent and qualities. Furthermore, Vigée Lebrun was deemed to have a different and more expressive artistic style compared to the revered and recognized style upheld by the Académie Royale at that time. At the age of 17, she began to earn a living as a professional portrait painter. She was quite productive, which drew the attention of the authorities, and in 1774, her studio was seized for painting without a license. She applied to the Académie de saint Luc, unknowingly exhibiting her works in their salon. In that year, she officially became a member of the Académie de saint Luc. Vigée and her family moved to an apartment in Hotel de Lubert, where the renowned art dealer Jean-Baptiste Pierre Lebrun also resided. After admiring Lebrun's remarkable art collection for six months, Vigée married him in 1776. Lebrun struggled to promote her work and introduce her to many prominent painters of the time. Unfortunately, he also used a significant portion of his wife's income to fuel his gambling addiction and satisfy his insatiable desire for paintings and artworks. Nevertheless, with the numerous portrait commissions she received, Vigée Lebrun was soon able to buy their own house. The Hotel de Lubert became one of the most fashionable art salons in Paris, and her popularity as a professional painter continued to rise. Vigée was summoned to Versailles to paint Marie Antoinette for the first time. The painting would be a gift for Marie Antoinette's mother, Empress Maria Theresa. As a result, it was a highly grand and formal portrait. Marie Antoinette wore a complete court dress, including a corset which she disliked and a white satin gown with large panniers. Every ribbon, lace, feather, and golden embellishment surrounding her symbolized her royalty. Holding a pink Habsburg rose, she stood next to a table adorned with the French crown. Dot. Above her, there was a large marble statue of her husband placed on a golden pedestal. Marie Antoinette was relieved because her mother, Empress Maria Theresa, was pleased with the arrangement. From then on, she began to paint the Queen and her family frequently, creating a common perception that she was the official painter of Marie Antoinette. When Vigée Lebrun became famous as Marie Antoinette's favorite painter, she had the determination to be accepted into the Académie Royale. Moreover, she wanted to be accepted in the most prestigious genre, which was history painting. Therefore, for her, Marceau de Reception, reception piece she submitted the painting, Peace Bringing Back Abundance, a historical allegory depicting the figure of peace draped in a dramatic green robe and the figure of abundance displaying a bare chest with a basket of fruits. The painting was intriguing because it combined the light Rococo style of the figure of abundance with the new and dramatic style of peace influenced by neoclassicism. However, her application was rejected, not only because she was a woman but also because she was married to an art dealer, which violated their rules prohibiting artists from engaging in trade. However, the Academy accepted her upon the direct order of Louis XVI. Can you believe it? They dared to reject the Queen's favorite painter with unreasonable excuses and disregarded her talent. 
Vijay Brun was admitted to the Académie Royale in 1783, along with three other women. Her public debut at the Académie Royale in that summer caused a sensation. Visitors to the Salon were astonished when they saw the portraits of Comtesse de Provence, Marie Antoinette's sister-in-law, and Marie Antoinette. The portraits depicted both princesses wearing, and chemise, attire, which was considered too simple for high-ranking figures like them. Many felt that the portraits were inappropriate for public display, given their elegant positions and the opulent court environment they should represent. This created controversy, and many were surprised by the painter's decision to portray these esteemed figures in simpler attire. At that time, chemise was worn under the gown as an undergarment. Consequently, Marie Antoinette and Comtesse de Provence appeared as if they were wearing undergarments in the portraits. Furthermore, the cotton fabric used came from British colonies in India. As an Austrian princess, Marie Antoinette was always closely scrutinized regarding her loyalty. Wearing a cotton dress was considered unpatriotic and reinforced the public perception that she lacked strong interest in France. There was a strong backlash, and the portraits were removed shortly after being displayed. Vijay Lebrun responded promptly by painting another portrait of Marie Antoinette. The face and hand position remained the same, but this time Marie Antoinette wore a polonaise gown made of grey silk with delicate lace trimmings. Her appearance was simple yet luxurious, with the dress conveying her support for Lyon's silk and Chantilly lace. But, like her queen, Vijay Lebrun continued to defy the formal rigidity of the French court. She painted Marie Antoinette's close friends in simple muslin dresses, contributing to the emerging fashion trends of the time. She encouraged Duchess de Caderousse, one of her queen's closest friends, to leave her hair unpowdered and flowing, which became a trend when she immediately went to the opera afterwards. The subjects leaned on their elbows, lips slightly open as if in conversation, which was likely the case. Vijay also persuaded Marie Gabrielle de Gramont, Comtesse de Caderousse, not to powder her hair for this portrait. An icon of style and a friend of Marie Antoinette, Gramont caused a stir in Paris in 1784 with her simple peasant girl appearance. Additionally, she painted Charles Alexander de Callan, the powerful controller general of finances, with a powdered wig on his shoulder. In 1787, a small scandal occurred when the self-portrait with her daughter Julie was exhibited at the Salon. The portrait showed Vijay smiling and with an open mouth, contradicting the conventions of traditional painting that had been in place since ancient times. Court memoirs revealing this became the talk among the relevant people. They considered it an affectation that was unacceptable to artists, art lovers, and people of refined taste. They insisted that such behavior was not found in past paintings. Vijay received the commission to paint Marie Antoinette's final portrait in 1788, aiming to restore the Queen's public image. At that time, France was marked by social and political unrest, filled with people's dissatisfaction, demands for reform, and increasing tension between the people and the monarchy. The portrait was large, standing nine feet tall, and featured Marie Antoinette in a magnificent red velvet gown, surrounded by her children. This composition was inspired by Raphael's Madonna paintings, a great painter of the Renaissance era. Marie Antoinette embraced her younger son on her lap, while her daughter leaned against her with an affectionate gaze. The Dauphin stood beside her, pointing to the empty cradle that was supposed to portray baby Sophie if she hadn't died before the completion of the painting. In 1789, the situation in Paris worsened. The masses descended on Versailles and captured the royal family. The artist's house on Rue de Grosse Chenet was disrupted by the Sands culottes. Troublemakers regularly attacked her studio because of her connection to the Queen. Pressured and fearful, Vijay realized she was in danger and had to leave. The next day, a large group of National Guard members entered her residence with strict orders not to leave the city or face the consequences. However, two sympathetic National Guard members returned to her house and advised her to leave immediately but to use a mail coach as a safer means of transportation than her private carriage. Vijay Lebrun followed their advice and booked three seats on a mail coach departing from Paris. However, due to many others also attempting to leave the city at the same time, she had to wait for two weeks to secure seats on the mail coach. During that time, the situation in the city grew more heated with increasing tension and concerns about unforeseen political changes. Vijay Lebrun and her family departed in the mail coach at 
midnight on the same day, accompanied by her brother and husband up to the barrier du throne. To avoid drawing attention, they dressed shabbily. Le Brun went to Lyon and stayed for three days at the home of her friends, Madame and Monsieur de Artaud. Her changed appearance and shabby attire made her almost unrecognizable. Finally, after a long and tense journey, Vijay, her daughter, and a nanny successfully left France and headed to Italy.